G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Oh, good day, Graham. Thank you. How are you, bud? Good to see you. Welcome. Oh, it's wonderful. Welcome. A very big welcome to you. Viewers, I would like to introduce you to Frank Miles. <clears throat> Frank, without a doubt, is probably one of the greatest bronze sculptors in the world, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, your stuff's just amazing. And we're going to be spending the day with Frank today and going through some of the processes that you use to create these wonderful pieces. You're too kind. Thank you, bud. Let's welcome. go and have a look. Come in. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Come in. Come in. <laughs> Well viewers, uh, here we are in Frank's studio and he's actually going to take us through some processes today on how you actually get to the end result of, of doing a bronze sculpture. I mean, we're going to go through the methodology. And as you can see, Frank's actually done this piece for us yesterday, just specifically for this, this show. And you've got another one over there, which I think is an amazing art piece. It's a commission that you've actually been asked to do, isn't it? Yes, yes. So you, right. you do take commissions, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's just absolutely. It's wonderful, it really is. I love um, commission work. It's really so how, how long have you actually been doing this, mate? Wow, 35 years? 35 years, yeah, yeah. And, and originally from Rhodesia. I'm a Rhodesian, but I, I did not do any art in Rhodesia. You I started uh, doing art in South Africa. Oh, okay. Well, th this actually is, I mean, me sort of being into parrots, of course, but this is a, uh, a palm cockatoo from Correct. northern Queensland, isn't it? Yes, look at the big beak. And it's just amazing, it's just beautiful. Yeah. How do you go about the process? Now, a lot of people, when they see a bronze, they don't realise that there's a whole bunch of processes you've got to go through to actually get to the end result. But this is really just making the, the clay model to, to go the rest of the way. Can you explain what's inside that and what type of uh, clay do you use? Yep, th this is the original. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I had it actually cut in half so you could see the armature inside. Okay. But it, it, it looked bitty, so let me just show you. What we do is I started the, with an armature. Okay. In there is a six mil rod. And I then I welded the wire on the top like that. Just ordinary old fencing wire and I'll wrap it around with thinner wire so the clay can grip uh -huh. and that's what I pack that around. Oh, okay. so I think it's, it's vital you know your anatomy mm -hmm. but we're not anatomists we're artists. Sure. So I, I always tell, I had a guy in here the other day that I was helping him with and I said you have to know what the bone structure underneath is then you can change it mm -hmm. but you've got to know what the underlying structure is and if you want to change it after that that's fine. Now, I, I think it's important to you know your anatomy. Mm, absolutely. But don't be a slave to, to it. Sure, sure. Yeah. And I, there's, there's, there are some pieces that you've got as well that are very abstract in their form too, aren't they? Yep. Which is, uh, which is the artist coming out in you without a doubt. Every artist has his own favourite tool. Sure. My favourite tool is, th is that, which you can buy or make. Yeah. I made that one, copied it from a, the a friend of mine had one. Yeah. Uh, that tool to scrape on and off if you need it. Okay. It's always useful to have a knife around. Yeah. Uh, just in case unexpected people do your, your kidney, which is not nice just to, and you just, to just, just, you know, if you want to blend things in, you know, sure, your sure. Kid, that's beautiful. Uh, I use these foam to get it smooth if I need it smooth. Okay. And then you just got little... I little use that, that also to make, you can make indentations, you mm -hmm. can make feathers, you can smooth it off, you can do all sorts of things with foam. Okay. Uh, and my final two, which are most important of the lot, is I paint my clay a lot. You paint I, your clay? Yeah, I do a lot of painting with the clay. I was going to say, we both use paintbrushes, but in completely different modes. No, I, I use a paintbrush for, for, for delicate stuff, and if you want to put in a, let's say you want to put in an eyebrow at the bottom, Yeah. well, let's, let's put it on there, you just put a little bit of clay on, that's what, how I do it, Yeah. and then you just push it to the brush, you paint it on with the brush. Right. So I do that a lot. 
you know, for all sorts of things inside the beak. I use I use my paint brushes. I use two basically. That is a finer one, and this is a rough. This is a rougher one. Okay. Uh, I use it all the time. All right. I'm saying that. What we'll do is we'll um, have a look at this other piece that you've got over there. This is the commission piece that Frank's working on, and it's just a delightful piece that really tells a story. So let's go and grab that one, and we'll start on that and have a look at two. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, now, who is this commission piece actually for? Can you can you tell us? It's for a company in uh, it's for Metcash in in Sydney. Okay. They they have given me great support over the years, okay. and I try every year to give them the best I can. Sure. So he's literally when you. When you look at it, it's just great. You can see how the whole thing's going to form. Now, in saying that, you're actually going to just make a bronze bronze table of some sort as well, are you? No, we're going to. This is going to be a mixed media okay. uh, piece. So this will be this 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 is the stand here will be a, a, an old 1920s counter okay. with the beautiful slats in it. Yes. Then it's going to take a a, a bend here. Yeah. And behind him is going to be the counter. Oh wow! The old-fashioned counter, all made in wood. Oh wow! Beautiful that's wood. Just wonderful. And that's wonderful. we'll have a till here. Yeah. A couple of sacks of potato on the floor, and uh, a few yeah. paraffin tins. Yeah. Uh, that's and just wonderful. We might modify this a little bit, but that's basically what. And uh, I'm going to put glasses on him. I think. I'm not. Right. I'm not sure. Okay. But I think I'm going to put glasses on him. Yeah. But it, it it just gives you a, a an idea of. Uh, um, the, the tender loving care that goes into putting something like this together and, and as I said once again you can see you know, you've got the paintbrush there but you can see just the, the form and the structure and the anatomy is, is uh, quite extraordinary. Beautiful piece mate. Yeah you see for, for, for a piece like this you're going to need to know your anatomy reasonably well. Yeah. But just, the, just uh, the story and the caricature of itself. I mean it's, it's almost uh, Norman Rockwell well, the, uh, the, in the, its approach. Of, of the two, the two uh, people are, are just a vehicle. Yeah. The pieces here. Yeah. This is where the this right is the, the this is where the pieces. Yeah. Uh, this is the, I don't know how to say it. I'm not that I'm not that good at expressing myself. Well, it's, it sort Gosh. of tells the story, particularly. I mean, people out there, probably uh, 50 and over, are going to uh, assimilate to the fact that uh, when we were kids, we were always in little stores like this, probably harassing people <laughs> to do the same thing. Yeah, I hope it appeals to everybody. You know, yeah. I hope just the emotion, the the the, the emotion appeals to everyone. Yeah. yeah. It's, doesn't matter the time era. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, so from here, I mean, let's say if we're going to, um, we, we have to take this to another stage now, don't we? From from this this claim. Yeah. Line. From where where do we go? I mean, from from what I know, we've got to divide this guy in two of some sort, haven't we? So you basically cut him in half. It, you you'd lay him on the ground. Mm -hmm. You you bring clay up to half the half the line. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I should show you over there. You yeah, know. that's you a know, great so idea. It's, it, yeah. Well, um, as you can see, we've sort of moved from our clay modeler, our wet clay model, and Frank, this is this is one that's actually uh, been you've prepared this one beforehand, haven't you? Yes, I, I have prepared this one. This is a different venture I'm going on sure. onto. It's it's a, a ceramic venture. It's very exciting. But however, I brought it here yeah. in the pretense that this is the original. Sure. And this is the mould you make in, out of it. Okay. It's a long and it's an involved process. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many ways of doing it. There's many materials of, you, of that you can use. I use silicon rubber and a backing of fiberglass. Mm -hmm. But I, I must stress, this is actually the foundry's job. Okay. The artist does the artwork, the original work, and you should send it off to a competent foundry. Mm -hmm. uh, I use the Perini's foundry in, uh, in Brisbane for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. He does an excellent job. Uh, for my money, the best in South Africa, in, uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, he's an artist. So we talk the same language. I can talk to him about what I, what I, I want. He gives a fair price, and he's a gentleman. Okay. And it's a pleasure to do business with him. Great, excellent. So this is a foundry job. Yeah. So once the mould is taken, yeah. two-part mould, which he would, he, the foundry would do, <coughs> or you can, you can get it from books, it's not, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. You then put it together, mm -hmm. bolt it together, and I'll show you how the foundry would take the wax. Oh, okay. So and, and the wax is what you founder. Okay, but you put 
to get this silicon here, yeah. you've actually got to cover that Correct. with clay, uh, haven't you? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, you, you cover it half with clay. So yeah. it's exactly cut line where this is, with uh -huh. clay. On top of there, you put six mil six mils layer of, of clay. Okay. And on top of the clay, you put a, a fiberglass jacket. Okay. So you put the six mils of clay, which would look like that, yep. and a fiberglass jacket on top. Okay. You do it both sides. Sure. You take the fiberglass jacket off, peel the clay off, yeah. put the fiberglass jacket back on, and now there's a hole there where the clay was. Right. You fill that with rubber, okay. and you get that. So and it's you do it both sides. This is just silicon rubber? Just silicon, it? silicon rubber. Okay. Yep. We bolt it all together, okay. and then as I'll show you, we pour wax in there, okay. pour it out, and you get a thin film of wax inside. Okay. And that's what you found out. Wow, that sounds great. Yep. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's bolt this up then. Yep. Done. Yeah. You, were, you were telling me the other day that there are various types of, of bronzes, various types of yep. uh, formulas for yep, them. Yep, there are. You know, basically you sort of think, well, it's bronze, but it's yeah. not. There's a whole bunch of different formulas for them. There are. It's amazing. Yeah. Really well, I use silicon bronze, which is 95 copper, pure mm -hmm. copper, mm -hmm. four silicon, one manganese. Okay. That's, that's the bronzes that Philip uses. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful bronze. Mm -hmm. It flows beautifully. It gives a lovely result. It's difficult to patina mm -hmm. uh, because it's so hardy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, does, it weathers beautifully. It, you know, it, but you used to make your own bronzes, didn't you? In, in Africa, I used to make my own bronze. Yeah. And I enjoyed making my own bronze because I had control over the quality the whole time. Yeah. My edition number on this is 15. Okay. So you you you, do, you could do that 15 times. Oh, okay. Okay. But everyone will be different because you've got to touch it up. You'll see. Sure. It never comes out perfect. You touch it up and make it perfect. So there's work. And they're work, all individual, work, work. really. They all well. If you see extent. if you see them apart, you'll see you'll think they're exactly the same. If you yeah. put them together, you'll see differences. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get some wax in there. Yep. Let's get some wax going. Okay. So you leave it 10 seconds and then you pour it out. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and it's, it's much like your... In there? Yep, thanks. It's much like your Easter... Your Easter you know how your Easter egg oh, bunnies Easter are made? Eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same, pro exact, the same principle. So that's the wax process done. Now, th this is what the foundry does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Well, we'll wait for that to dry. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for that to cool. There we go. How about that, guys? Okay. <laughs> Isn't that just great? Fascinating. From from here, obviously, you, you'd uh, just from here all you'd, all, you'd, all, you'd all you'd the work there? all yes, oh, absolutely. Okay. You, make, you you now make this perfect. Okay. Cut that off, of course. Yeah. You make absolutely perfect. That's great. And then that yeah. is what you invest in your foundry investment. Okay, all right, well this is uh, some of your ceramic work as well, mate. So, yeah, actually, a good point was when you're actually making these moulds, obviously because it is ceramic and you're actually just putting a line inside the mould, you've really got to like just make little sections for things like the teeth and the nose and push it in, don't you? Yep, um, but it's common sense. Yeah. It's common sense. It's, uh, um, oh no, I've covered that one up. Yeah. Um, we look inside there. Yeah. If you have a look in, in there, you can. That's about how thick the wax is. Yeah. So you take your mould, your rubber mould, push push it in, take cut a layer of, of uh, six mil thick clay, yeah. stick it all in. You know the air is going to give trouble, so you stick it all in push hard. It as well, it's still a, it's still a labour of love, but oh, it's a labour of love. You got because you got to dry, and then you have got to put them together, which yeah. is not easy. And then you got to touch it. You got to re-sculpt it. But it's, it's lovely, I'm excited. It's a new so, thing. You're, so you're really sort of wetting that line, wherever that line you is, and you're wetting it, and then just sort of really moulding it into place. Oh, yeah, you've got to squish it into place, make sure it's stuck, and yeah. push it, and oh, it's, a, it's, it's, 
just be easy to do the bronzes, wouldn't well, it? Well, it's easy to do the bronzes because <laughs> the founder does it for me. <laughs> but it's, but, still, it's, still, uh, yeah. it's still a fascinating process regardless. It's just amazing. Oh, it is. And it's, it, you know, it, it gives the market a chance of getting my work at a, a far reduced, a reduced price. It hasn't got the value of bronze, but yeah. it's still it's the same art and it's beautiful art. Absolutely. And, and you it's, really, it's I mean, much more the, affordable. In the end, only somebody like yourself, I mean, somebody that really collects bronzes would really know the difference, I suppose, once you've, once you've patented them. Oh, yeah, yeah, because th that now gets, goes, it gets fired, mm -hmm. and then it gets glazed, mm -hmm. and then I've depicted a method of patinering the, the glaze, which I find very nice, you know. So, there we go. And that's, Here's a glazed piece, I mean, it, it and that's, that's patina. That hasn't been coloured. That's a dark glaze underneath, and I, I patina that in, amazing, in a kind of chemical. And you're going to actually show us some patining right after we do the I'll show you the patining actually. on bronze, yeah, it's beautiful. That's great. Yep. But it's similar to that, so mm, it gives it a lovely beautiful. lustre. Well, Frank is going to actually show us how to patina, which was uh, what we actually saw with that little African eagle in there in the head. But uh, so how do you go about this, mate? Okay, we first, I first of all put on a, a base patina, Grant. Yeah. Uh, I use potassium sulfide. You can use you can mix, you can use caustic. You, there's lots of ways of making base patina. Yeah. So I've prepared a piece here for you. So I just wet it so it's nice and wet all over. Yeah. And then I spray it with a chemical if it sprays. There we go. So you can see the colour changing. You see it changing? Oh yes! Look at that. That looks good. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Okay, see it's a slightly different colour from what it was? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna go so we'll go to that table there and we'll okay. do some hot patinas. Okay. So Frank, we uh, we heat this up, do we? Yep, this is a the a, a hot patina process. Yeah. It's it's a control process, you can do it over and over again and you, you can get a similar result. You can never ever get the same result. You yeah. can get a similar result. So we're going to change it from its bronze to a little bit darker with the potassium sulfide. Now we're going to, I'm going to put a, a black wash on it. Okay. And I'll put the black wash on it so it brings out the green. Because on top of the black wash, I'm going to put a green uh, cupric nitrate. Yeah. And then I'm going to put a couple of spots of ferric nitrate on it just for a contrast. Okay. And we'll see how it comes out. Sounds, looks, sounds great. You, you never know the patinas. I'm keen. This is the first so time I've, I've got ever my, seen this. So I've got my think it's two patina it's brushes. It's pretty there's fascinating. Green and there's my brown. Yeah. Okay. You got a little so airbrush there? I've got a little airbrush with my black on. Yeah. And we heat it up. It's got to be a certain temperature. Okay. It won't work. About 110 degrees C. Okay. Okay, so it's, it, it's difficult to do little pieces. Little little bits are always difficult because they take the heat differently. Okay. When you get on, on the big expanse, it becomes a lot easier. All right. Right, now this will be easier. We'll go nicely. See the dog that's coming out there? Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. That's a basic black I'll put, put, I'll put on. It's just wonderful. Now, we, now we're going to put some uh, copper nitrate on it. Yes. Now, temperature here is critical. Yeah. And you can hear, you can hear from the noise if it's right. It's, it's, got, a, it's, it's, got, really a, it's got a special sizzle, you know. Yeah. I, I, could, I could do this blindfolded and I'd, I'd know if it was right. So even the patterns there are just, uh, they're, uh, they look like, it look like a coral reef. Wow, it's just beautiful. A lot of artists get the, the founder to patina their work, you yeah. know. Um, but I just like patinaing my own work. In case getting a little bit cold, yeah. is, is, and that gives you a different effect as well. Yeah, if you make yeah. it cold, you can get a lovely watery effect. Okay. Watch, watch. You, you put the brush on and you let it run. Okay. Watch, watch. Look, see, see how you get the outside? Yeah. It's a bit too cold. I'll show you here. So we want to have a water effect there. So you want to put your brush on a little bit, wet, little bit wetter and you leave it on longer. Oh, yes, yes. You see it? So it really comes up you quite, it? quite it comes dark on the edges there. On the edges, exactly. Yeah. Okay guys, so now we've finished the green. There are lots of ways to put the green on. We could have made it thicker, mm. we could have left the black areas bigger, 
Uh, we could have used a slightly different technique, colder, hotter, and you get different results. Different result, but this is just one way. Right. And let's put some, let's put some spots on them, shall we? Okay. Make them a guinea fowl. Sure, sure. Let's hit it. Now we let it cool. So the next step is to polish it. Okay. And you'll see how it'll come, it'll be, it, it just comes beautiful. We finished the, the, the first waxing and now we're going to put a black on for the final polish. And we'll give it a good shine and you'll see how it'll come up beautifully. Alrighty mate, well here we are in your, um, your gallery, which is connected to your studio, and what we've done is we've brought in this wax piece, and um, this is actually the bronze that you end up with after putting this guy together here. That was the wax you made just, yeah. a, just a little while ago? And this is the end result. And the foundry turns that, yeah. which is wax, yeah. dead, no life, yeah. into that beautiful piece of bronze. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And anyway, actually, we were saying before you've got you've got some pretty major pieces on the on the coast as well, haven't you? Yeah, we're lucky enough to have a couple of pieces. We've yeah. got um, a large size piece at Corumban. That's uh, that is that that's the surfer with the really big round rings. That's it, that, that's in the surfing club. Yeah, and then there's uh, a, a one on the beach. It's my daughter. She sent for me. Okay. So that's large size. And there's another musician on the beach just up the road, and then at the main beach is another one. Oh, it's just wonderful, and I have seen your stuff up there. Yeah. It's, it's just great, it really. Is. So it's fantastic. Yeah. So, and you obviously have clients come in here, and they can actually view what you were doing, um, and uh, sort of come in, buy, order commissions. They're welcome. Anything Any, they anybody's to welcome to come in. Yeah. It's yeah. just great. Yeah, but I like sharing my work with anybody. I'd really like to thank you for having us here today. What a uh, pleasure! It's been great, mate. And we're just, what a pleasure! I think everybody's learned so much. Thank Absolutely, you, thank you, bud. Yep, we've learned so much about being with this amazing master sculptor. He's a, he's a good man. He's a good man. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. But uh, uh, it's been a great day, really. Thank you very you. much. Absolutely. And if if you guys out there once again want to see more of uh, Frank's work, you can come into the website um, colourinyourlife.com.au and see all of his sculptures. Um, we're hopefully going to be doing some more work with Frank as we go along as well. And uh, until next time, see you later. Well, what a sensational day, viewers, and what an amazingly talented man in a, just an incredible place, it really is. What a great studio. Uh, now remember, if you wanted to see more of uh, these incredibly talented people and you want to see more of Frank's bronzes as well, you can come to www.colourinyourlife.com.au and until we see each other again, remember, Make sure you put some colour in your life. See you next time.